What's getting pressure cooked is rajma or red kidney beans. And what I'm making is possibly one of the most quintessential North Indian favorites called rajma chawal. Hey guys, it's Banu Namdar and welcome to Rajshri Food. Let's make rajma chawal. Well, rajma is a fantastic and simple recipe and every home has their own kind of version of making rajma along with chawal. Let's begin with adding a dollop of butter. Let's come back to rajma. I would love to tell you a little more about this. You can use two varieties of rajma, rather three. There's one which is known as a Punjabi rajma. There's another rajma which is whitish in color. And there's a third variety of rajma which is a Kashmiri rajma. And it's really tiny. They're kidney beans, but of course three different varieties. I have used the Punjabi red rajma, which is the red kidney bean. What you need to do is soak this for at least eight to 10 hours, best overnight. You drain it, wash it once again, and you pressure cook it with a touch of salt for 45 minutes under low flame. Well, in case you don't understand that principle of cooking, you can put this under pressure and cook it for 18 to 20 whistles. Well, the butter is kind of melted. Let's first add in slices of red onions. Cook this till they just kind of begin to turn golden brown in color. To aid that, I'm going to add in a little bit of salt, but just a little more of salt will do no harm. But remember the fact that salted butter, of course, has salt. Salt has been added while cooking the rajma. And this is the third time you're using salt. So you need to be very, very, very careful with the quantity of salt that's being involved here. The onions are just kind of beginning to turn golden brown. This is the stage where we need to add in cumin seeds with ginger, garlic, all finely chopped, and chilies, like I said, the non-spicy version. Let's mix all of this well, saute this for 30 seconds, and then we add in some freshly cut tomatoes. Mix this well. And with this, I'm also going to add in some powder spices. Beginning with, of course, garam masala, turmeric powder, red chili powder, and finally, the most important of them all, and that is amchur or raw mango, dehydrated in powder form. Well, not a lot of it, but yes, it's essential, it's important, because tomatoes will not do its complete job. Amchur is going to kind of accentuate the flavor, and that's what we're looking at in the rajma. Mix all of this well, till the masala kind of becomes nice, soft, mushy. Let's move on to revealing the cooking of the rajma. Well, here, yeah, if you come a little closer and have a look, well, the rajma has just perfectly cooked and it's nice and absolutely mushy, almost like a paste. And that's exactly what we're looking at. This now gets transferred straight into this. And without the addition of water, remember what I say, without the addition of water, we need to kind of mash this a little because the moment you add in water, it's all going to swim all over the water and it's going to become difficult and difficult and difficult. So mash this till you achieve the kind of consistency that you're looking at. Then we'll add in the water, and then you have the most amazing rajma, which will get ready. Well, of course, when I'm talking about mashing the rajma, we're not looking at mashing the entire collection of rajma. We just take like a corner in the pan, mash whatever is there, and then you mix all of this, bring it together, add in water, Another mistake that a lot of us do here at this stage is we do not boil it enough at this stage. What happens in that case is that the rajma pieces are swimming separately and the water is kind of almost disintegrated and is floating separately. What we need to do is boil this at least for 15 to 20 minutes so that the starch kind of thickens the water and there you have the rajma that's then ready. While the rajma is cooking, let's move on to the next flame and start cooking the chawal, which of course is a combination that's made in heaven. For the chawal, of course, you take a deep vessel and we add in three cups of water because I have used one cup of long-grained or basmati rice. Well, of course, at this stage, you can give it a tadka of jeera, you can give it a tadka of black pepper, bay leaf, cinnamon, whatever you feel like, but I like it just plain and just neutral. To this, I'm adding in a teaspoonful of salt, maybe just a touch more, 
and that's just perfect. To this, I'm going to add in long grain rice, which has been soaking for 20 minutes. This needs to cook on high flame for at least 10 to 12 minutes till the water on the surface kind of dries out. I'm just adding in a touch of vegetable oil so that the rice grains after cooking stay nice and fluffy. And that's just beautiful. The rajma has cooked well and has become perfectly starchy the way we are looking at. With this off goes the flame and the rice has almost kind of dried up on the top. With this, the cover goes in. On low flame, you cover it and cook it on dam for at least five to seven minutes or till the rice is nice and fluffy. And with that, the rajma chawal will be done and ready. With a gentle sprinkling of julians of green chilies or ginger, well green chilies being my personal favorite, your garma garam rajma chawal is done and ready. Make this for your family and friends and have a blast.